Hello and welcome back to Tuesday Night Hype number 76. We are going into now the final of this competition with Poolmaster and Katota in the final. I'm Derek Brown and with me here is Patra. How are you feeling Hello. about this final matchup here now? Um, I think both the players are really good players and they, yeah, good job to mm. both of them for reaching the final, um, the final game. And we see that Poolmaster decides to ban the Cthune Warrior of Katota that we saw. And I think that's a great choice for banning for Poolmaster because uh, his lineup is, well, he had Zoo, right? Which was aggro. Yeah. And, um, he also had like a lot of mid rangey stuff and the armor would just be too much for those. I think that's right. Yeah, so I think it was a good ban on Poolmaster's end. And maybe Katota kind of figured, hey, I think Poolmaster's going to ban my my Cthune warrior. So mm. I think he just went ahead and and banned the the warlock because I think it's just going to be um, he's going to ban the zoo of Poolmaster because it's just going to be like hard to deal with with his priest, his Nazoth priest, his yeah. tempo mage maybe even. I don't know. It's not such a huge problem for the tempo mage, but it's, it's more like a 50-50 match. Yeah. But, um, we haven't seen Katota's Shaman yet, so if it's yeah. a... Yeah, normally Warlocks are favored against Shaman, whether it's aggro or mid, so I think he did a good choice for batting too. Yeah, I agree there. And so we are going to see this does look like it's the aggro Shaman against a more mid-range Shaman here. How do you feel this matchup usually turns out? Usually the the mid-range shaman is favored against the mm. uh, aggro but you know if um eh, we could still see the aggro taking it it really depends on what kind of cards they get yeah yeah that's right i think that the pool master is definitely going to be looking for as much of his early game as possible to be able to keep up in this <laughs> matchup against the aggro oh the bloodlust is not a good card but yeah there now <laughs> it would have been nice to have his taunts uh thing from below maybe that's come... a good point yeah um, i mean yeah that's yeah. that's the card you're really looking to draw isn't it rather than yeah. having your opening hand necessarily yeah. he'll be looking for that later mm. but yeah i think he needed um i think the argent squire and the rock Butter is good and same with the tusker but too mm. bad he didn't he doesn't have a trog. He doesn't have totem golem. Yeah. But the um, yeah, the cards in his hand, like the rock biter and the thing from below, are definitely the comeback cards. That I think he's going to be looking for, in order to take back the board from Katota. Mhm. Mm um, I'm thinking uh, maybe the. Okay, so he's going to coin out the Tusker here. Yeah. He's not. I he's mean, not going to rock biter anything just yet. Yeah. Ooh, not a great totem for him to get there. Yeah. The most other ones. Uh, mm. And, and the Argent Horse Rider. Yeah. Really he can nice actually him, clear. Man. What he should do is, yeah, clear this Argent Squire. Because yeah. it's possible Katota has to take down the, the, the anything that a mid range shaman has on his board because. Because of Va Valiant Bluff later. Yeah. Thunder Bluff Valiant, yeah. Oh, sorry. Bluff Valiant. Yeah. And so, unlucky here for Poolmaster, he gets effectively the two worst totems he could get from his um, Tuscar Totemic here. Yeah, and no no um, Lightning Storm either for Poolmaster right now, so... That's right, yeah. So we could see a potential thing from below here just to try and stop this aggro, but the rock biter and the flame tongue are just going to make short work of that. Yeah, see, I don't think Poolmaster had a great start here. If yeah. he did, I think it would have swung over to his side more, but the opening hand for Katoda was really good. 
Mm. Yeah, just, that's like, right. Just having a lot of fun here. <laughs> yeah. A lot of and face damage coming in. A lot of face damage, yeah. And I think it's just quickly looking too much for him. I mean, we could see a lightning storm would be pretty good here to clear some of this off. At least the stuff without Perfect. divine shields. Your dog seems to agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People's, people are going to be like, ow, my ears. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, that's yes, kind yeah. of sad. The Drene. Is it Drene? Drene or Drene? Draenei. 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 Dr Whatever you want. Uh -oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's kind of sad that he had to use he he had to use her without any totems on the board. Yeah, that's the thing. This is definitely not the situation that you want to be dropping that card, even if it did have more stats from totem buffs. Purely because it's just he can just wait, well, choose to not ignore it, but it's just not enough stats to stop the aggro here. And he just drops every minion that he has, really. Because he knows that... Katoda knows, okay, Pool Master does not have his Lightning Storm. Yeah, um, and even if he did, it's not that good here, to be honest. Yeah, it wouldn't kill, like, the Divine... It wouldn't even kill the Totem Golem. He'd have to yeah, roll exactly. a Bell Totem. Yeah, and that's a lot of ifs. <laughs> yeah, the Feral Spirits, um, it just buy him, like, maybe an extra turn, but... Yeah, that's the thing. It might damage some of the Divine Shields and Totem Golem to allow him to Lightning Storm potentially on following turns. Oh, he has some choices here. Do you think he's going to bolt the Taunt, the Trog, or the Face? <laughs> Three options. I think, yeah, probably not the Face here. I imagine if he's going to bolt anything, it will be the Trog. Yeah. Yeah. Or else and he's still... Like it could yeah, be a, a way for Poolmaster to kind of come back if he didn't take down the truck. Mm, yeah, that's right. I mean, the more minions you have, the better Bloodlust gets. And with one minion on board, it's really not going to be good enough. It's going to keep him alive for a turn. But um, even that's not necessarily guaranteed. And, yeah, I mean, there's really very little that Poolmaster can be doing here. That's a very desperate Hex here. And pretty much any damage is going to finish off the game, including a Lava Burst. There we go. And that's that's yeah. the first game out. See, well, the Aggro Shaman took it. Yeah. And I think that just came down to the fact that Katota was lucky in that he drew all of his early game minions in that game rather than drawing a lot of his burn which is what can happen as an aggro shaman and That's pool true. master just had the cards that you really don't want there like hex and bloodlust which yeah. just really clogged up his hand really unfortunate for him yeah usually you're looking for your minions at the start if yeah, you're a shaman I agree. okay so well, at least we know what Katoda's uh, shaman was now. It was aggro. That's true. And now we won't <laughs> ever see it again. But never mind. <laughs> and what, so, and one win for Katoda. Yep. Yeah. And so now he's got the choice of either the priest, uh, the Nazoth priest, or the, the tempo. tempo mage. Mm. I so, think I would like to see the... If I was... I'd like to see the priest. Okay. Over, over, like get it out of the way. I think yeah. that might be a harder one. Oh, oh. This is I an think interesting matchup. This is also kind of fifty-fifty, but like the hunter does mm. a lot of does a lot of damage, especially with Call of the Wild and Turn Eight. Oh my gosh, and the priest can't really deal with that. Yeah. With no, no light you're... bomb. Yeah, that's the thing. The light bomb going is going to be a big. Um, hindrance in this matchup potentially and yeah the only real thing that can clear that is the organized circle yeah so he has to keep like some of his clears just yeah ready for call of the wild yeah and I, th I think that the shift that hunter has had away from a more aggressive face hunter has definitely been a bad thing for the priest because it used to fare quite well just because it could heal up a lot of the damage. 
-hmm. But now there's so much continued pressure throughout the game with the hunter dropping so many minions on curve. And uh, just... Doom. Oh, sorry. What were you saying? Oh no, sorry. You go. Okay, Doomsayer is not really going to do much against the hunter because, like, mm. look at him. He's at pool master has deadly shot, and if it's turn five, he just has to stampede in Kodo. Yeah, that's the thing. So he's going to drop it now, probably before the Kodo can come down. It doesn't even uh -huh. have to deadly shot it if he put, if he drops it now. He can uh, he can just use his weapon and cover if if he wants yeah. to waste a charge on that, but or he could just deadly shot it, which he chooses. Yeah, to. he is just going to go for the damage, and this is just again just the <laughs> time old problem that's faced priest of just four attack minions. Because here we see the shadow word pain and the death. Neither can target the huffer here. Okay, he's going to have to. Oh, he had. Oh, Poolmaster has a Doomsayer of his own too. Hmm. <laughs> Tracking is going to be good. Oh, Call of the Wild. And yeah, also snap like pick. Gold. You've got to take that. Yeah. So, I mean, in this. Oh. Yeah, he feels <laughs> he's got to do it. Yeah, it feels kind of bad that he, he's only going to kill a Huffer. Gosh, Huffer is like. That's what it takes to kill a Huffer, right? One estimate. Yeah. yeah, it's true. But I think that's I a fine no play because he, think, yeah. he knows that he's probably going to be playing Sylvanas next turn. So he needs a relatively clear board to be able to play that and not feel like he's just going to die. That's true. Ooh, but here the high main is looking very powerful with no Entomb in hand for Katota. Would you trade your Sylvanas into the high main? I mean, if you do, the death rattle of your Sylvanas triggers before the high main, so you are definitely going to steal the infested wolf. Uh, okay, well, I think that's okay. If it's, and yeah, if you... that's pretty good. And they all can I and hero power? Or can I hero power? Or yeah. maybe just save it. I'm not sure. Mm. Or you could just Shadow Word Pain down one of the um, hyenas. That too. Or just leave them. Ah. Ah. Oh, okay. okay, he's going Very to. Very cool. Play. I thought maybe Flash Heal first. Oh, yeah. okay, he must steal it. He must steal it. That's yeah. So cool. Well, that's so cool. Very cool <laughs> play from him there. So he does get the guaranteed um, uh -oh. high mate there. That is the best way to take a high main. Yeah. Up there. <laughs> the end is coming! Right, so here we see a double Doomsayer, which he's thinking is surely going to activate. But with the pain, Shadow Ed Pain, and the Flash Heal here, he's definitely going to be able to take both of them out if he wants to. I think, I think he, he has to. He doesn't want to lose his board. Yeah, that's a good point, because he doesn't have that much minion power in his deck, being a priest. So, trying to preserve it as much as possible seems like a really good play. Oh. So we're going to see, yeah, he needs to build a board, because he knows that turn 8 means Call of the Wild. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Are we going to, see, are we going to actually see Call of the Wild here? I mean, it's not... It's oh, not sorry. Best. Yeah. It's it's not the best, but it is still an incredibly powerful card. Yeah. Even in these kind of situations. I wonder. It's true. But you Yeah. Oh, oh wow. He just didn't want anything anymore. Yeah. I guess he was... just thought that he had no chance of coming back against that board. Yeah, that Savannah Hymen was just like the finisher kind of thing, like, okay. Crap. Yeah. That's like one of my best minions that he just took right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With That's the death simply. rattle still, still in the savannah. Yeah. That's right. So, we've now seen that Katota has gone up 2-0 against Poolmaster. So, he only has to snatch a win with his Tempo Mage now against either a Warrior, a Shaman, or a Hunter. Yeah, Katona has been playing really well. 
Yeah, he's been playing really, really well. Like, his decks are just doing... Like, his priest, I was surprised that his priest was going to be doing well, but it is it is doing well. It's doing really well, yeah, I'm, I am surprised by that. But okay, so, so, I haven't played a lot of this matchup, to be honest, so I'm not really sure how this is going to turn out, but I imagine that cards like Mirror Image are going to be quite good in generating a lot of tempo and protecting yourself against the axe. Yeah. But oh, he chooses to uh, he take it out. He needs he needs <laughs> to find better starting minions. That's fair enough. Yeah. Hmm. And so he doesn't have. Yeah, doesn't have really great plays coming on in the start here. And I imagine <laughs> he just crazed alchemist or just ping. He didn't even ping. Or nothing. Yeah, he's oh, afraid he's of the playing, battle rage. Yeah, he's playing around battle rage. Yeah. And even Axe. But I think the Great Alchemist is, was okay for tempo. Yeah. I guess he's just thinking that's how he's very likely to get through a Bloodhoof Brave. Mm. It's not the best here either. He might just have to crazy. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Naked Flame Waker. It yeah, might, that's it's just gonna get taken like down by Corcoran. Well, I can't play Corcoran yet because he's only got three mana. But um, we could see a whirlwind, even though it's quite awkward for mana cost reasons. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, that's okay, I guess, for Katoda. Yeah. If he had his um. What's that? The sorcerer, the new card, the three-two with spell damage. The source, it's like a cult sor sorcerer. Yeah, cult sorcerer. That would have been great on his turn three, dropping that. Yeah. Last the monkey taunt. Definitely. But mm -hmm. even so, again here, both players being forced to play quite awkwardly around with their mana because they like last turn he felt like he had to kill the flame waker, and this turn it's really high value to get a ping here. So he's not going to play the water elemental, and he's going to decide to instead um, ping and play the mana worm. Mhm. Mm I was actually thinking about the water elemental there, even though like the monkey was still up. But okay, yeah. this at least this worked turn. Out there. Yeah, it worked out because he has arcane blast in his hand, and yeah, definitely. The conjurer will have to come down later. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, this water elemental is going to be great against the warrior, you know, to freeze up, like, the face all the time. Yeah, absolutely. And saving the crazed alchemist looks like it's going to be paying off here, because there's a very decent chance that we'll see a bloodhoof brave here. And the alchemist and frostbolt is going to be really powerful, potentially. I kind of like the bloodhoof here, mm. but... Yeah, I think that's Just for the lack of a better thing. alternative. He can deal with it though. Actually, he could just hit it with his water elemental frostbolt. It. Yeah. Or actually, he could even craze alchemist frostbolt it. And yeah, it. exactly. That would have been great. Hmm. Oh, he can do that now with the crazed alchemist. Yeah. And just continue. So um. Freezing the face. Yeah, just mean make sure that he can never use that axe. And so a frostbolt ping here looks to be fairly decent, to be honest. Okay, I was actually thinking crazed alchemist, um, frostbolt, and then ping face. Hmm. I guess this way he still has a contingency plan against um, the blood of brave should it come down. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. And doesn't decide to play the Crazed Alchemist, even though the face is frozen on his opponent. And it looks like it's going to pay off. Yeah, it's going to work here. Mm. So I think he's really looking for a minion that he can play, and he does get exactly that. <laughs> this is going to be wow. great. Really good for him, Chopper yeah. Flame Waker, then Crazed Alchemist, and then Frost. Yeah. I mean, if you feel really lucky, you could frostbolt the face, but maybe not. 
This deck seems like a lot of fun, huh? The Temple Mage is just like, yeah, with the crazed alchemist, it just makes it more fun. Yeah, it seems really cool. Oh, he wants to play the arcane missiles and just... Yeah, yeah okay. there we go. No problem. Save the Frostbolt. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that even though he was in looking in a pretty decent position, the fact that Poolmaster is able to gain back board control here, and then he's going to be able to really solidify that with Varian in the coming turns, is looking a bit sketchy for Katota here. Actually, yeah, he could just use all his cards, but that means Katota has no more cards, really. Oh, Tome. Or Tome is... Home is really good. Really high value, yeah. Even if yeah. you're slowing down a bit. Because he doesn't have a turn nine as of now. Hmm. Yeah, I like the pick of Tome there a lot. Ooh. <laughs> the axe is a really nice pick up there. Oh we yeah, Tome is really nice because look, he's only got Poolmaster only has fifteen. Oh, okay now. Seventeen. Seventeen health, yeah. And uh, Katoda was actually at 30. Oh. Mm. Mm. So I wonder if we'll see the Tome or the Spell Slinger first here. He does decide to go for the Tome. Oh, wow. Mm. Ice Block. So it kind of turned into a Freeze Mage for a bit. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want. I mean, Spellbender could potentially get some value against Execute at some point. Oh, the Varian Rune is just waiting for the turn 10. I know, that's going to be so might... devastating. It might pull out the rag. Oh, here's the spell damage we've been waiting for. Yeah. With the Arcane Blast synergy. Yeah, that is very nice. Mm, he's thinking, should I just... I think he should spell break and arcane blast yeah that seems fine or he's thinking about drawing but like it's that's only because we see that varian's about to come out mm. <laughs> and like i'm thinking about oh he needs more board presence you just but... need to develop minions yeah Behold, the armies of and that was the easiest variant ever i think yeah like not not a not such a big board yeah Ooh. oh oh it does only get Grom one minion, drag. but yeah, Grom is a very good minion to get. So he can freeze the board to buy him another turn if he wants to here. Yeah. <gasps> Ooh. Poly morphs. Okay, so yeah, I guess Polly's pretty good here. Hmm, because I guess you can take that. Would you polymorph the Varian or the Grom? Do you think here? If you were to take I it, wonder. it he, um, I think I would um, do the variant because his his um, the what's it called? The conjurer can take down the Gromash, but okay. I think his weapon's going to hit it. So yeah, it's a tough he one. Has, he has to like top deck like I fireball wonder. or something. Yeah. Wanted. But Goes yeah, to the he, torch. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. The torch. Could um, maybe if he gets up, uh, gets his other flame waker, that's mm. what should be. Would be good. Yeah, really good point. And the forgotten torch does just add a lot of burn to his deck overall. For if he wants to finish off the game that way, but oh. doesn't see it going that way. Yeah, so he didn't. See. Didn't um, frost nova. Yeah. Didn't too. Yeah. So. And. That was I, one win for... Yeah, was a win for Poolmaster there. Master. That's right, with his warrior. And I think that with that matchup, the mage is often going to be looking to finish it off with the burn. And just the fact that warrior is able to build up the armor with the armor smith and just their hero power means that that's not really an option anymore for them. Yeah, so what, which is Poolmaster going to... Okay, Poolmaster's going with his uh, shaman. Yeah. Which is the slower totem shaman scene, that's right, yeah. Mm. So he does get here a lot of his early game, which is very nice for him. But at the same time, 
Katota's got Cult Sorcerer, Sorcerer's Apprentice, and Frostbolt, and with the added spell yeah. power. This is the kind of hand that he wish he had last match. Yeah, that's a good point. You like to have both of the sorcerers in mm. starting hand. Yeah. Oh, but he doesn't have the arcane blast. Oh no, which would have been mm. great against Totem Gold. That would have been really good. Yeah, you're right. So he could. Yeah, coin just... out a spell slinger. Spell slinger, yeah. Mm. See what he gets. Oh. Eye for an eye. And what did Poolmaster get? Shiv. He got Shiv, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, Katota definitely got the short end of that deal. This is what I was saying, right? Sometimes. Yeah. You sometimes. just give your opponent the right card. And you give yourself eye for an eye. <laughs> well, now the blast decides to come. Okay. It comes but just a tad too late. Yeah, you don't want to blast that anymore. Yeah, exactly. Now it's kind of like, okay, do I just ping here and just play eye for an eye? Yeah, I mean, you could just in desperation go for something like Sorcerer's Apprentice, Frostbolt, the Argent Squire, and Arcane Blast. Which is what he does. And play eye for an eye too. And play eye for an eye. Which, I mean, if he gets hit by the Flame Wreath Faceless, it's not terrible. It is quite a lot of damage. Oh, and he even has the fireball for this. Yeah, that's right. But that's not enough. It's not enough. Yeah, he's still enough. one mana off killing it. Mm. Yeah. Well, okay, he doesn't choose to go for the faceless. Good lucky for Katota. Yeah. Lucky for well, that's lucky for Poolmaster there. That wasn't a noble sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, I think he was trying to check it too. Yeah, it's true. Hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna play Cult Sorcerer. Let's yeah. Magic. So this is a really nice situation for the Manatide Totem here because the Doom Hammer, if he chooses to play it, can clear off the Cult Sorcerer and he can keep drawing with that. He just really wants to... He's still wondering what the hell the secret is. Yeah, it's true. And now he's gonna know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not a problem though. That's like yeah. the um, Pally secret, huh? Yeah, that was a really unfortunate spell to get off Spell Slinger there. Yeah. Mm. And, and this Mana Tide Totem lives for, what, another turn? Another turn. I mean, that's the thing. Just having two of these in your deck against su some decks in certain situations, it can kind of be a win condition on its own. Because you can mm -hmm. just draw so many cards because he really doesn't want to fireball this and he doesn't really want to go for missiles here because it's just it feels like such a waste against a zero damage card oh we got the flame dunk. that's really good yeah so i mean i guess now he's uh katota is going to be looking for his um flame waker so that he can start shooting out a lot of missiles more like Flame Strike. Yeah. Oh, I don't but know it's if not even turn seven. <laughs> yeah. Do we know that he runs Flame Strike? Have we seen that? Most in his deck? Most do at this point. Yeah. yeah. Especially with like you know the, these kind of shamans, zoos. Sure. But yeah, yeah. Cool. it would have been yeah. nice to pick up um, Flame Waker then. But yeah. No, there's no Flame Waker here. Is Bloodlust going to take it? Oh no, it's not enough anymore. Yeah, not quite yet. It does finally kill off the mana tide. But yeah, it has a, finally. A lot of cards, yeah. <laughs> it got to live for too long, actually. It, it really did, and I... Yeah. Uh-oh. That's... Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, actually is that game. just... It yep, is. you're right, with the six and the four. I didn't even notice he had a rock fighter in his head. I was looking at Bloodlust. Yeah, it's true. Wow, so that was exactly. just... Yeah, very decisive for Poolmaster there. That mana tide is drawing in too many cards. It's actually even now. 2-2. Two, two. Yep, that's right. So the last match is going to be the Tempo Mage from Katota against the Hunter from Poolmaster. Mm, I wonder how that's going to go. Mm. If 
it's going to be kind of um, Katoda if he loses this now. He's just going to feel really bad because it's like he lost three times with his tempo mage. It's the one deck that's let me down, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean... Like in a row, sort of. Yeah. I feel like this... You, asked for you could potentially do quite well against Hunter as Tempo Mage. Because they obviously don't have any healing. So your burn's going to be quite effective. And they are going to be making quite a lot of tokens with Unleash the Hounds, Infested Wolf. So your Flame Waker might be quite good in this matchup as well. Right, Which yeah. we do see already. So, yeah, I think this is definitely anyone's game at this point. And uh, Poolmaster didn't pick up the best hand, but... Yeah, the absolutely player, doesn't. The, the Doomsayer could maybe do something, yeah? I think, yeah, we Hoda very doesn't likely have anything. Doomsayer. The end is coming! Yeah. yeah, and then he's just going to have to pass this turn. Oh, like, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, wow, he's oh definitely gosh. not going to do that. Ah, <laughs> uh, three, four, four. I actually think he could take this out right here, but yeah, I think he'd be very. A lot of resources, like just to kill. I mean, yeah, he has to just to. He has to just to keep his sorcerer's apprentice. Up. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Oh. Oh. Imagine that if that didn't. Crazy. That would have been the game over pretty much there, I think. I know. It would have been. Wow. Gotta make those risky plays. And Katona's yeah. like, this deck has failed me like twice already. Yeah. Gotta do it. Just gotta do it. Oh, wow. this is great. Really nice pick up there. It's potentially gonna allow him to just clear off both the spiders as well. Oh. Oh, misses both of them. That is definitely unfortunate. I was surprised it didn't even get at least one, but he's yeah. gonna—he's gonna have to trade with. Uh, I think he has to do it with the sorcerers. Oh yeah, yeah, wow! Really he's actually playing around quick shot or or the weapon, which or is bow. amazing. Yeah, that's right. Great plays yeah. by Kododa. Really good plays, and it means that he's going to have a pretty free board to be able to play Ethereal Conjurer if he wants to, which is exactly what he wants. Oh, I think the mm. tree. Oh, the yeah. Either one is fine. Yeah. Maybe more card draw. Oh, that's that's really good to have with a Drake out. Yeah, definitely. It means if he plays any of the animal companions, they'll all die. Or a lot of the other mid-rangey cards. And this, yeah, playing out his two drops and stuff, it does just feel quite sad at this point. Uh, Conjurer and Arcane Blast is really good. Yeah, that's a lot of tempo really quickly there. And it just, I think at this point, if he can get any kind of burn... Frostbolt. Like Frostbolt, yeah, he can just ignore the high main if it comes down and finish yeah. off his opponent. Or even Mirror Entity, oh my gosh. What if he put up, well, no, he, Frostbolt's nice to have right now. Because yeah. Mirror Entity would have been nice if he could use it already. Yeah that's, a, yeah, that's a good point. Doing it into a turn six against a hunter, you know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like, we're not going to steal Call of the Wild with a Mirror Entity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Leoc does mean that he can take out one of uh, Katota's minions here. But he's still facing... Oh, the Azure Drake is a really nice draw here. Allows him to keep up the pressure. Oh, that damage wow. is real. Really just, a lot of damage. Uh, he could just um, hit the Leoc with his Drake and Wait. just trot bolt the face. He could just, like, yeah, he could just go face with everything and with no heal. That's like, that's it, pretty much. I oh mean, yeah, yeah, he could have just faced the, with the Azure Trick and then it's a sure win with the Fireball next turn. Yeah, exactly, but I mean, even so, it doesn't really matter. He's still going to be able to finish off the game here. Yeah, this is what he want. This is what he wanted. Yeah, and that does mean that Katota is going to be the champion for Tuesday Night Hype. Number 76, finally picking up a win with, with his, his tempo, tempo, mage. tempo Mage. Yeah, that's right. He 
did it. And he's yeah. he's got to be feeling really good about that. He would be very if he wasn't able to pick up one win with it in the finals. It was a it was a it was a close match really because um, pool master caught up. Mm. It could have been anyone's game there, but um, we did see that the tempo mage had a really good starting hand in that in that last match. Yeah. And I think that, yeah, that's just exactly what he needed in the previous games with his mage. Just didn't quite get the minions that he needed to be able to keep up the yeah. pressure. And you want to, like, have the start the good starting cards so you could just snowball. Yeah, that's exactly right. And straight away, just being able to get a uh, Flame Waker with two free um, missiles was just such a powerful starting hand. The, it was just it was too much tempo lived up to the namesake but yeah um good job to both players and congratulations katoda for yeah. being the champion <laughs> really well done <laughs> yeah it's, is there uh what was your what was your best moment in the entire tournament for you Derek? i mean the best moment in anything is usually when yogsaron is dropped and oh, that's yeah, obviously that's a highlight I think that was actually the best match. It was like the that most, had to be the best most match. fun, most craziest match. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. That it was White Line versus Katota, that one. Yeah, I think that's right. Warrior but against I, Warrior. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I think just in general, um, White Line's um, Nazoth, Elise, Tempo, Warrior was my favorite deck that we saw today. Which one? The The Priest? The, the Tempo Warrior, oh, his... Sorry, tempo Warrior. Yeah, the Nazoth Tempo Warrior. Oh, that was your favorite? Deck? Yeah, that was my fave. <laughs> I don't even know what my favorite is. I think they're all really good. But yeah, I mean, um, in terms of the most different, it would have to be the Warrior Nazoth. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, um, I did like... Yeah, that was the best match for me too, but... I think I really I enjoyed watching the Tempo Mage. I don't know why I always enjoy watching Tempo Mage. It's like because it, it's, it's like fun they're deck. Just, it's like they're just having fun and the alchemist, yeah 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 alchemist um, tech just playing <laughs> around with the minions. So it's cool to watch too. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's gonna be it for today, guys. I was like three matches. The first the first match was really long. The last two went by <laughs> so fast, and yeah. Um, Congrats again to Katoda. And um, just want to thank our wonderful sponsors again Gamer Sensei, good coaching site, Esports Hero, a great tournament platform site, and of course, Esports Arena. And a big, big, big thank you to all you guys for tuning in and watching Derek and I cast this tournament. And I really hope you guys enjoyed Tuesday Night Hype 76. And if you want to, um, f- uh, don't forget to follow Vicious Syndicate here in on its Twitter, uh, sorry, Twitter, on its Twitch page. <laughs> <laughs> and if you guys want to see more of me and Derek, uh, I'm on Twitch, actually. I'm Petra Plays. I'll be chatting in the chat. Derek? Yep. <laughs> um, I do not have a Twitch channel, but you can catch me here at another point on Tuesday Night Hype. So make sure to tune in to subsequent weeks. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be it. Bye, guys, for now. See you guys you. next week. <laughs>